What's going on everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder and the fifth episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier has been released and it was over an hour long 61 minutes if you're counting the credits which you know they do count we don't count but they count but we did get a mid credit scene this time and a rather good one that's definitely foreshadowing some events that are about to happen in the final episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier which is the next episode episode six that and the ending of this episode gives us a lot of hints of a lot of things that are going to happen in the finale. And this will be my ending explained and post credit scene explained video, breaking down everything that happened at the end of this episode and what it's going to lead up to in the next episode. And then of course on Saturday, it will be my full episode breakdown. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. And I'm also giving away a Captain America shield right now. Details of how to enter the giveaway are in the description and the pinned comment down below. So let's start off in this video with that mid credit scene with John Walker because he was a pretty big part of this episode. Now John Walker's story arc has definitely changed since the very first time we saw him. Now let's be honest, he was kind of a dead man to begin with. In this fandom, we all love Captain America Steve Rogers, played by Chris Evans, and this was a new guy coming in to take his place. He didn't really have a chance. However, in the second episode, when you met him, you kind of wanted to give him a chance, but then he goes and says things like, stay the hell out of my way. However, they've done a pretty good job at trying to make you sympathize with him, especially in this episode. It starts off with him running to a warehouse by himself right after he killed one of the Flag Smashers in front of a lot of people. They were all filming, so essentially the world knows what he's done. Sam and Bucky confront him, he refuses to give up the shield, they fight, and he almost actually beats them, but Sam and Bucky come out on top. He then goes to court where he deals with the Senate and is stripped of his Captain America title. The Senate refuses to listen to him, so he simply walks away, stating, I am Captain America. Then we get to the post credit scene. In the post credit scene, we see John Walker making a new Captain America shield. And there are a few things to talk about here, but first and foremost, Foremost, this shield is not going to be anything like his old shield. His old shield is made out of vibranium, the most rare and precious metal on earth. And as far as we know, the strongest. There really is no replacing vibranium, unless we're talking about adamantium, but there is zero chance that John Walker got his hands on some adamantium. So this shield that he is making himself is going to be inferior by a lot. It is not going to be anywhere near as good as the vibranium shield that used to belong to Captain America. America, Steve Rogers. Now John has kind of gone off the deep end, though he believes that he is doing the right thing. The Flag Smashers are a terrorist organization who are hurting people, and they killed his best friend, so he retaliated. In his mind, he just killed a terrorist. So John Walker believes that he truly is the new Captain America, whether the US government decides so or not. So John Walker is taking things into his own hands, and he has decided himself that he is indeed Captain America. He forges a new shield, putting some of his medals on on it like his Medal of Honor, and the shield now becomes a symbol of what he himself believes in. And he's going to go after the Flag Smashers. Why? Because Carly is actually the one who killed Lamar. Now he lied to Lamar's parents stating that it was actually Nico who killed him and he killed Nico, so Lamar's parents think that the person who killed their son is dead. So John has unfinished business and he sets out to kill Carly, but he builds his new Captain America shield first. And he is definitely going to join the fight in New York in the finale. And the final battle is set up in the ending of this episode. And there are a few key parts to the ending. One of the key parts is what seems to be the conclusion of Zemo's storyline in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Bucky finds Zemo at the Sokovia Memorial, and Zemo actually knew that Bucky was going to come for him. Bucky decides not to kill Zemo, but to turn him into the Dora Milaje. They come and take him and explain that they're going to take him to the raft. The raft is a maximum security prison located in the middle of the ocean. We actually saw this in Captain America Civil War. This is where half of the Avengers were taken after the battle in the airport in Captain America Civil War. This is where Tony came to visit them, and then eventually Captain America broke them out. This is where the Dora Milaje are taking Zemo. But before the Dora Milaje leave, Bucky asks for a favor. This favor is the briefcase that Bucky ends up bringing Sam. And what's in the briefcase? A Captain America slash Falcon suit. It's essentially a Captain America suit with wings. 
But this is going to be a very, very different suit than we've seen before because this is made in Wakanda. We can probably assume that the wings are going to be made out of vibranium. And it is possible that the actual suit is going to be made of the same material that Black Panther suit was made out of, laced with vibranium as well. And it would be really cool if it had the same ability, such as absorbing energy and then releasing that energy as a blast. So in the briefcase that Bucky brought Sam is his new Captain America suit that still has the Falcon wings. Bucky ends up staying the night over at Sam's place, and then on the next day before Bucky leaves, they kind of start to develop their own friendship. As they talked about, they were both just two people who had a common friend. And now, sadly, that friend, Steve Rogers, is gone. And Sam actually says Steve is gone a couple of times here. But before Bucky leaves, he actually reveals something that we didn't know happened in Avengers Endgame. Bucky says, when Steve told me what he was planning, I don't think we understood what it felt like for a black man to be handed the shield. How could we? And then he apologizes to Sam. It's a very real scene, and it also reveals that in Avengers Endgame, behind the scenes that we didn't see, Steve actually told Bucky what his plan was. Steve told Bucky that he was going to give the shield to Sam, which means he actually told him as well that he was going to stay back in time and spend the remainder of his years with his love, Peggy Carter. Something that we weren't really 100% sure about before, but we kind of expected that Steve told Bucky about his plan. After all, in the MCU, he was pretty much his childhood best friend. Bucky and Sam part ways. Bucky is going back to New York, and Sam starts to practice with the Captain America shield. And by the end of this awesome scene, he definitely gets the hang of it. We then cut to a scene with the Flag Smashers. They're in the middle of a park, and Carly says, I got some help to even the odds. This is where George's Bartrock, aka Bartrock the Leaper, shows up. You may remember him from the very first episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He is part of the group LAF, and he was the one responsible for kidnapping Captain Vassant of the United States Air Force, in which Falcon defeated him, thwarted his plan, and got Captain Vassant back. Now, this person is who Sharon Carter was actually calling on the phone during a scene in episode 5. Sharon calls somebody on the phone and says, I have a job for you, and if it weren't for me, you'd be rotting in that Algerian prison. She then says, I can give you double this time, I promise you won't regret saying yes. Now, what she's referring to is actually something that happened in Captain America the Winter Soldier. Bartrock was actually in the Winter Soldier. He was a leader of the group of pirates that hijacked the ship, the Lemurian Star. He fought Captain America one-on-one -on -one in hand-to-hand -hand combat, in which Captain America knocked him out. However, he woke up and then threw a grenade at Steve, but of course Steve was fine. Bartrock managed to escape, but he was later found in Algiers and was arrested by S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, we find out that Nick Fury actually hired him to hijack the boat, and we find out here that Sharon Carter was actually responsible for getting him out of prison. Once he got out, he joined LAF, and then we saw him in the very first episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And he now wants to kill Falcon, which is very interesting because Sharon hired him to help the Flag Smashers. So Sharon Carter's role in this is still very unknown, but she is indeed helping the Flag Smashers, because the deal was, Bartrock brings the Flag Smashers some help and he gets to kill Falcon. So Sharon is doing some shady stuff here, however I don't believe that she's bad. I think she has a secret plan that they're not going to reveal to us until the final episode. But right now it does seem like she is helping the Flag Smashers out, she's clearly been involved somehow, and let's just hope that she remains good and helps out Sam and Bucky in the end. Now Carly ends up revealing her following. The Flag Smashers have a lot of people backing their cause, and she says that tonight they're going to battle. They're going to make sure the GRC doesn't vote on whether or not to send refugees back to their own countries, and it's revealed that they are in fact in New York where the GRC vote is going to take place. The Flag Smashers want worldwide unity. They don't want there to be any borders between countries, so the fact that the GRC is voting on sending refugees back to their countries is terrible terrible to them. We then see the GRC actually taking a vote, which really isn't a vote. The US Senator pretty much decided that all of the refugees are going back. Everybody is in place to actually send the refugees back. But the meeting is interrupted because as it turns out, the Flag Smashers have already infiltrated the GRC. 
Meanwhile, at the same time, Sam gets a call from Torres. Torres has been able to ping the location of the Flag Smashers in New York. He says the location may be false, but as Sam is watching the TV, he sees that the GRC is meeting and voting in New York, and he knows that's where the Flag Smashers are, and he knows that they're going to attack the GRC. He then goes to the suitcase that Bucky gave him, and he opens it, looking at his new Captain America suit. But of course, it doesn't show us that's the final scene. We'll see it for the very first time in the finale of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So next episode, we're going to have the Flag Smashers attacking the GRC, Bucky and Falcon reuniting, of course. Falcon will now be Captain America when we see him. John Walker is going to continue being Captain America on his own terms and go after the Flag Smashers. And then, of course, Bartrock the Leaper is going to try and kill Falcon and Sharon Carter's involvement in this whole entire deal will be revealed. And hopefully we'll finally find out who the power broker is. All of this in the next episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the finale. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest Falcon and the Winter Soldier videos. And of course, look out for my full breakdown of episode five coming out Saturday. In the meantime, let me know what you would rate this episode in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and for live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.